Preeclampsia is the leading cause of maternal death in Europe and is responsible for more than half a million infant deaths worldwide. These statistics are all too familiar to Professor Louise Kenny, consultant obstetrician and director of the Infant Research Centre at Cork University Maternity Hospital. It is a life-threatening condition and in fact globally it accounts for the deaths of about 70,000 women every year. One of the problems is that most mums who develop the condition don't really have any obvious signs or symptoms. They may feel completely fine or they may feel just generally and non-specifically unwell. And it's only when we take their blood pressure or um, dip their urine and examine it for protein that we actually realise there's something untoward going on. So what is going on inside the mum's body when she has preeclampsia? That's the million dollar question. We don't really understand what causes the disease and because of that we've been very slow to develop screening tests and appropriate treatments. We think the condition originates in the placenta in early pregnancy. In most women who have preeclampsia, the placenta is very small and underperfused, and consequently the babies are often small and growth restricted. But that's only one aspect of what is actually quite a complicated disease and there are numerous other things happening in the background. And people might be familiar with it from Downton Abbey and the fact that Absolutely. there's no treatment for it then and there is very little treatment for it now. It's one of my big frustrations. Um, when the fictional character Lady Sybil died of preeclampsia, it was essentially treated much the way it's treated now. Obviously, our supportive measures that we've developed over the last 100 years have come on and we have access to cesarean section and we can take care of babies at much earlier gestations. But in fact, the only way we can treat it is the way we've treated it for 100 years or so, and that's by delivering the baby. So my first boy, Ryan, was born at um, 25 weeks. In terms of preeclampsia, the symptoms and stuff, I didn't know I was that sick. My blood pressure was, was really, really high. And I was complaining of what I thought was like um, heartburn. Mm. So we went into hospital and Brian, Ryan was basically brought, born five days later. Um, in those five days, I think we went through every emotion you can possibly think of. And I remember Louise coming in on that morning of the 13th of January. She said, if we don't deliver you today, she said, you will be on ICU and I don't know what's going to happen to your baby. Dad, no, that's his teeth. So Ryan was delivered and he was, you know, you, you didn't hear that uh, cry that you hear about. But Louise turned, I remember Louise turning to me and she goes, he did, he did, he did take a breath. He did take one breath. We heard him take a breath. He was only 540 grams. So one of the nurses said to us, you know, she said, you know, you should do the wedding ring photo. That was actually Mike's wedding ring on Ryan's wrist, but that actually went up his whole arm, it wow. went up his leg. He was so small, they couldn't put a nappy on him. He had a little cotton, tiny little cotton ball for his nappy. So how long in total did he spend in hospital? Um, we spent three months in Dublin and then we came back to Cork for another four months. So he was in hospital for just under seven months. He's perfect to us in every way residual things from being born that prematurely for him was actually his feeding and um, we don't know why nobody really knows why but he doesn't eat say like other children eat so it's a constant battle to get him to eat but he's getting better and it's you know lots of therapy and stuff like that so despite going through all of that with ryan it didn't put you off having another one no it didn't <laughs> no um i always wanted to have a second child i got preeclampsia again wasn't as critical because he was developing really, really well. Yeah. He was born um, a whopping five pounds one. We didn't know what to do with ourselves. It was way more normal, I suppose. But still, you're dealing with a premature baby. We ended up going to the NICU again for a week, this time only, as opposed to the seven months we'd spent there before. While preeclampsia develops in early stage pregnancy, the symptoms may not appear until it's too late. But, as with Mary's second pregnancy, managing the condition from an early stage can make a difference. Louise is looking for detectable signals in the body called biomarkers, which will help to identify who might be at risk. We've been trying to develop a screening test and it's complicated because preeclampsia is a complicated condition. And so it's likely that we're going to need more than one biomarker and possibly as many as 12 or 14. For the last uh, decade or more, we've been searching for those biomarkers and it's taken a significant effort. Um, not only have we had to develop the science to look for the biomarkers, we've also had to generate the samples to search for them in. Spin-out company Metabolomics Diagnostics was formed to develop and commercialise the world's first diagnostic blood test for preeclampsia. The test can be done early in the pregnancy to predict the risk of preeclampsia developing later. 
Based on the science in metabolomics, the test analyzes small molecules present in the blood which contain key information. It's like the CSI of cellular investigation. In fact, the technology is more commonly used in forensic science. Blood is spun down into plasma and run through a machine, which looks for 14 relevant biomarkers associated with preeclampsia. So we have a prototype test and we, we know it works reasonably well, but now we need to assess whether it really is as good as we hope it is in a, in a new cohort. So the improved trial is a, what we call a phase two clinical trial um, of 5,000 first time mums who are being recruited across six clinical collection centres in Europe. That's huge numbers to be dealing with. It is, but when you think about it, preeclampsia only affects 3 to 5% of all first-time mums. So in order to capture enough patients who are going to get the disease to adequately trial the test and be certain that it works, we need to recruit at least 5,000 women. A thousand pregnant women will take part in the trial here at Cork University Maternity Hospital. Recruitment has begun with 200 women already signed up. It's a good time to kind of try and help those that haven't had a baby or people who are about to have a baby and may be in danger of getting preeclampsia and then leading on to eclampsia because it's a scary time, especially with your first baby because you're not sure what's going on and you're only learning about your body. The girls are great. They'll go through everything with you and um, they basically just take your blood pressure, they take your bloods, um, they take a strand of your hair, which is kind of cool because it's like CSI. But <laughs> This is a fantastic project for Irish researchers, but also for Irish mums. Irish mums, and in fact, mums globally. This is um, Irish science with the potential to make a massive impact on the global stage. It's actually quite difficult to raise research funding for pregnancy-related research. Pregnancy is often perceived as a very niche area. When I do a funding pitch or when I explain the importance of our work, I always flag to everyone in the room that everyone is the result of a pregnancy, and therefore our work is far from niche. I think it's great that there's all this research going on and that for people in the future, they'll be able to do a simple test and they'll know, oh, I'm actually at risk of preeclampsia and they can take the necessary steps to avoid it. We didn't have that luxury, so we spent seven months in hospital with a very, very sick baby, not knowing whether he was going to live or die. Sometimes things don't go well in the lab and sometimes our grants get rejected and our papers um, get bounced. But what keeps me going, and I think the whole team, is that our research centre is right here in the middle of the hospital. And we only need to walk one flight down to see very sick mums and very tiny babies. There's no motivation like that.